So I know it's been a really long day, and I may have accidentally pressed the button earlier, but can anybody guess what this is? Don't worry, I have options. Is it A, lizard poop? B, dead slugs? C, slug sex? Or D, a really fancy chandelier? C? Well, you are correct, dear audience. So this is a leopard slug, or two leopard slugs, actually. And do you see that blue thing down there? That's their penis. And slugs, leopard slugs, are hermaphrodites, meaning that they have both male and female genitals, but they do not self-fertilize. So they don't have sex with themselves. They have sex with other slugs, obviously. But the way that they reproduce is by creating a cord of slime down a ledge or a branch of some sort, and while traveling down this cord of slime, they intertwine with each other, and they extend their penis, and while doing that, they exchange sperm. After reproduction is over, they go their separate ways, either jump down the cord or travel back up the cord, and they each lay a freshly fertilized batch of eggs. Now today, I'm going to be talking about sex positivity. Now, I have to put this up, even though it kind of, sort of, very much so defeats the purpose of my presentation, but sex, also known as sexual intercourse, is a very common and vital habit that most organisms on planet Earth engage in. So all mammals, including humans, bugs, reptiles, we all engage in it for varying reasons. The biggest reason of all is to maintain our population, but it can also be a form of pleasure or romance with one or more partners. Now, if reproduction is such a natural and vital process of being alive, it raises a really big question as to why it is such a taboo topic in so many cultures. This has led to inadequate spread of sex education, where in some places, sex education isn't even a thing at all. This has led to not enough knowledge, particularly among our youth, concerning safer sex. This includes how to draw boundaries, how to respect other people's boundaries, how to prevent the spread of STDs and STIs, or even knowledge about general anatomy, even. So, because of this, I'd like to explore the concept of sex positivity, as stated before. It is defined as a social and philosophical movement that seeks to change the cultural attitudes and norms around the topic of sex, as well as promoting sex as a, very important, natural and healthy part of the human experience. Now, I'd like to emphasize that sex positivity focuses a lot on personal sovereignty, which leads to safer sex, consensual sex, which are free from violence and coercion, as well as the freedom and space to explore one's sexual identity. Focusing on sexual identity, it branches out into one's gender expression and orientation, one's relationship with their body, one's relationship style choice, which is different between sexually and emotionally, and recognizing one's reproductive rights. Other sex-positive movements include the acceptance of polyamory and asexuality. Quick refresher, polyamory is defined as a consensual, open, or non-monogamous type of relationship with certain guidelines, while asexuality is defined as the lack of sexual attraction towards others. But it is more so an umbrella term to encapsulate the vast spectrum of romantic, spiritual, and emotional attraction that every human can experience. I'd just like to reiterate that the sex positive movement is most focused on making sure that there is comprehensive and accurate sex education, especially in schools. And I know that I've reiterated the importance of knowledge a lot so far, so it's about time we start learning. <laughs> Please, calm yourself. I haven't, got, I haven't started yet. So. This is the New Mexico whiptail lizard. And as you can see, depicted behind it is the lesbian flag. Why? Because it's an all-female species. 
And the way that they reproduce is by cloning. And so their eggs have twice as many chromosomes as eggs that have been fertilized by sperm. Now, these species do show some mating behaviors, such as female mounting females, and scientists believe that it's a form of ensuring that their eggs are fertilized. But, okay, the only con with this species is that if there were any sudden environmental changes, they could be wiped out in an instant because their gene pool is extremely, extremely limited. Now, this little guy is a male peacock spider, and he does this, and this, and this. Now, you may be wondering, oh, how cute, you know? Is he dancing for a lady, perhaps? Kind of. He's also trying to save his life. Um, the way that he does, um, sorry, the way that he begins the reproduction process is by first wooing the female, and he does so by raising his bright, vibrant fan on his abdomen, as you can see, and he does a little shimmy for about 50 minutes, and if the female is not satisfied with his routine, she will lunge at him and kill him. <laughs> and if she is satisfied with his routine, sh they will reproduce, and then she will kill him. <laughs> now these are Humboldt or Jumbo Squid. And they reproduce through shooting their sperm pack, sperm of Thor, AKA their penis, onto their partners. Now the funny thing, or like the really cool thing about Jumbo Squid is that they are bisexual. Because they engage in reproduction with both male and female partners. Now, scientists believe that this same-sex behavior may be attributed to making sure that their genes are passed on to later generations because they live in a very highly competitive environment and they don't live very long either. So I like to believe that they live by the motto of live fast, die young. <laughs> now, these are Neotragla bark lice. And the cool thing, not funny, cool thing about them is that the females are the ones with the penises and the males are the ones with the vaginas. And when they copulate, they do so by the female inserting her vagina into the male's penis. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. By the female inserting her penis into the male's vagina. And they, do, they stay like this for about 40 to 70 hours. And the way that they stay together is because the female has a bunch of spines around her penis, and when she inserts it into the male, it basically, it's like Velcro. They stay like that. And if you were to ever pull them apart while in the process of reproduction, the female will be fine, but the male will have all of his internal organs ripped out of his body. <laughs> now, these are anglerfish, and you see this over here, that's the female anglerfish. And the male anglerfish is this little guy down here. And so when male anglerfish are born, they are tiny, hungry, horny little dudes. <laughs> and the way that they seek out a female is using his sense of smell. And when he does find a female, he latches onto her belly. And the moment that that happens, he starts to dissolve into her skin. Everything is gone, except for his testicles. So I would like to believe that in the anglerfish world, the more pairs of testicles you have, the more dominant you are. And it's also really, it's a really cool form of birth control because you can control whenever you want your eggs to be fertilized. Now, I know you may be wondering, what's with all the random animal sex facts? Well, I chose random animal sex facts because I hope that there is an internal understanding among our audience today that sex is an important part of our ecosystem, no matter how not normal or funky or weird it is. And as humans, as animals of planet Earth, it is important to know that sex is vital to the past, present, and future of every species, including ours. There are problems in our world, such as teenage pregnancies, the spread of STDs and STIs. They do happen, 
especially in places where sex education is not as prominent or even a concept at all. There are problems of not getting checked or not wanting to get checked for reproductive organ diseases or endocrine disorders because of the lack of understanding within the medicinal field. To make matters worse, even if a diagnosis has been gained, patients have reported that they feel such a feeling of shame and fear surrounding it. There's also the problem of not knowing where a clitoris is. And I know it may sound funny, as it is, is the object of many jokes, but it is quite ironic, considering we live in a society that so heavily sexualizes the female anatomy, a large percentage of our population is not familiar with the female anatomy. But you know what's an even more pressing problem? Sexual assault, rape, these things do happen. The violation of someone else's body, the violation of someone else's relationship with their body, it happens terrifyingly much. The dynamicism of sex, it is incredibly vast, and there is so much to learn and to understand and to discuss about it, but we do not do it because we fear the subject, and because of that, we, it is unknown, and the cycle, it feeds itself. I feel like there is a need for us to get over ourselves, to get over generations of fear and stigma surrounding the topic of sex if we are to learn and to teach each other to be in control of our sexuality, as well as to be compassionate towards the sexuality of others. You may be wondering how this connects to peace, but I feel that peace begins with learning, and it's about time we start from the basics. Thank you.